Greetings. Uh, this lesson refers to drawing instruments. Uh, these are two pages in your workbook. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a basic introduction as to what the drawing equipment uh, is all about, what they are used for, and uh, basically how you just need to take care of them. So we're going to start off that every great draftsman like yourself, which you are, no, are now going to become, has all these drawing equipment items. So you have a standard uh, 2H or 3H pencil, which is basically the one that I'm having in my hand right at this moment. And that is basically used for drawing lines, preferably dark lines. So you're going to use this one to draw dark lines, right? Then you have that one there, which is your clutch pencil. Now the clutch pencil is something like this, where it has nibs inside and then you have the trigger at the back here which allows you to the nib to come out or if you hold it in and you can push it back. Um, yours is slightly different. Um, it has a thicker uh, nib and uh, it allows you to draw better quality lines and it doesn't break easily. So that is more for drawing lines faintly. Construction lines will be faint and once you have the drawing, you will go over that drawing with your uh, 2H or 3H pencil. Right. Then we're moving on to, uh, it's always great to have a, a good eraser. And that's an eraser over there. Um, always use this eraser when lines are drawn faint and you had made an error and you want to correct the error. You can just remove it uh, with the, a good eraser. We don't use uh, an erasing shield anymore. Um, it's an old type of drawing instrument. Um, some draft people still use it, others don't. We don't have it in our package that we have. Okay, so uh, you um, can just ignore that particular one. If you should buy it at any stationery shop, you can use it. Um, it, it comes with little template holes in in, in the template for erasing particular uh, item or specific items uh, on a very congested drawing uh, filled with lines. All right, let's move to the next few items. Here we have our two set squares, um, of which the one is called a 45 degree set square uh, because it has two 45 degree angles on here and if you add those two you're going to get a right angle which is 90 here so those two equates to 90 there um, don't worry about the length here you do get different types of length then you have the either 60 or 30 degree set square we normally call it by its smallest angle which is the 30 it has a sharper angle here um, and when you have 30 and the 60 there, it's going to equate to 90, which you have there. Both are used specifically in specific types of drawings, okay? And I'll show you what it looks like. Yours will look like that. That is the um, 30 degree set square, referring to that angle over there. And then we have the 45 degree set square, which you have uh, that part of your package okay then we're moving on to the protractor any of the angles that uh, don't appear on your set squares uh, must be uh, you we, we need to use this uh, particular uh, equipment um, any angle in between 60 and 30 and in between 45 uh, for example, uh, 55, 50, uh, 110, uh, we use this uh, angle ruler, which is called a protractor, to actually mark it and draw it, right? And then we have two types of rulers, a uh, scale ruler and a normal ruler. doesn't really matter because we actually can scale it down without using a scale ruler. But it's good to have a ruler for measuring purposes. We look at uh, the next page, 
This is a very important apparatus, very expensive as well. It is the compass. Um, yours is slightly different, and I want to show you what yours looks like. Yours uh, has a red lever there, which you actually use as some sort of a handbrake. If you flip it like that, you can actually open it and close it. If you want to fix it to a specific radius and that difference between the sharp edge of the compass and the pencil point or the nib point is called the radius, you can actually uh, just lock it there and you can draw any sort of angle which you measure the radius from year to year. Okay, um, this is specifically for angles that are, I would say, bigger than... Uh, um, 36 radius okay because uh, this particular item is used specifically for, for big radii um, or circles that have bigger diameters uh, there is a specific apparatus that we are going to use for smaller angles which I will show you in a bit um, Normally it's just anchored there with the sharp point and you can just handle it with the top handle there to draw any sort of circle that you want. Okay? Depends on the size in between here. Alright. This is a very important uh, apparatus as well. It's called a T-square. Um, this is what it looks like. It is a ruler with a teapot like that there. This teapot runs against the board which I will show you in a moment and this part has measurings on there or measurements on there but it's basically used to draw lines in a horizontal direction left to right or right to left. It is not used to draw lines vertically. We use the set squares on top of the T-square to draw lines uh, in a vertical direction, but I am going to demonstrate in a minute or two And then of course you will have the page which we are going to be working on preferably um, The a3 page is the bigger page double the a4 just, This is just to show you that a3 is double the a4 Pages in your workbook, which we are going to be using uh, consistently throughout this year to be able to continue and complete our drawings. The uh, next few items, which would be your, your insulation tape, as well as your circle template, um, those are not on the uh, introduction of instrument page, um, so I want to introduce them to you. So let's look at this uh, tape. Uh, what you need to do is this tape has a purpose of fixing the page onto the board. So you're going to peel off a little piece like that. Um, and then you're going to take a pair of scissors and cut off a piece like that. And then you're going to shear that even further in half. And that will be used on both sides of your page to be able to actually um, fix the page onto the board and I just want to show you if I could just get if that is my board I'm going to just connect that on the on the top uh, corner of my page both right side and left side so that my page, and it only has to be at the top, you don't need to put it at the bottom, so that my page does not move should I run the T-square over it every time I draw horizontal or when I draw vertical lines. The page remains stuck onto the board. Right, and at the end, if you are done with your drawing, you always take it from the page side and just remove it by pulling it like that. That in that way you will ensure that you don't tear that corner of your page. Alright, um, then we will look at the circle template. Mine unfortunately broke, but it still serves its purpose. All of these different circles on here would be different diameter circles. 
because diameter is from circumference to circumference anywhere around so if you need a specific circle the measurement of the circle will be here at the bottom it will be written there the diameter if you need a circle like that all you do is you can draw it immediately perfect you don't need to use the compass for small circles and this runs up until a diameter of 36 so anything bigger than 36 diameter we will have to use a uh, compass for drawing circles right and then um, lastly what you are going to be looking at is just a corner of my board uh, like that it is nice and smooth and I'm going to show you quickly how my T-square runs alongside my board so this is your drawing board that you have there nice and smooth so you're gonna have your T-square on your board and you, can, you need to make sure that your T-square runs like that when you draw. There should be no gaps along this side here. It can't be like that where there's a gap and you draw lines like that. It, all must, all must, it must always be firm against the side of your drawing board. Okay? And it slides like that. If you are right-handed, if your dexterity is of a right-handed person, you will have the black teapot running and being controlled by your left hand. If your dexterity is of a left-handed person, you will have to turn this around and that will be the case of you controlling it with your right hand and drawing lines with your left hand. Please take note of that. All right? My dexterity, fortunately, is of a right-handed person, which is uh, most likely the case with everyone. Um, so I'm going to control it with my left hand. Right, so that is basically how I'm going to draw when I slide my T-square always against and that will ensure that my lines are nice and even and straight. Alright, if I'm going to put my page, any page, a drawing page, a blank page on my drawing board, I'm going to take my page like that and I'm going to keep this firmly against my side here. That's going to go against my side. Right? And I'm going to let this fall on top of my page. No gaps here. No gaps there. Right? Make sure that you have it nice in the middle of the board. Once you have no gaps and it's firmly against the side here. And there are no gaps here. I can't have it like that or like that. You must have it perfectly. And it lays perfectly in the middle of the board. You are going to go to your two pieces of your tape and you're going to cut off two pieces there I'm cutting my two pieces now so all I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that at the top end of my page on my right hand side and I'm going to do the very same on my left hand side right make sure it's nice and firm so this page now will not move when you draw. You don't need to do it at the bottom here. You can only need to do it at the top. So I can slide this T-square over my page and I can draw lines like that from left to right. Um, all the lines horizontally. And that's the purpose of my T-square. Don't ever use it like that. You can use it like that, but we have different equipment pieces to draw lines vertically. Right, let's talk about the vertical lines. So if I have lines like I've drawn now, there I've drawn that line and I'm drawing that line there. Those are faint lines. Now I want to draw lines vertically. I can either use this set square like that, never with a point, please, never like that. Always with this side flat or with that side flat or sometimes when you're going to do angle lines with that side flat that's a 45 degree line 45 so I'm going to keep it like that and anyway now these two now work in tandem firm against the side T square and this lies 
um, flat so that it moves like that on my T-square. They're working in tandem. So I'm drawing a line either top down or bottom up faintly, right, like that. And you can just practice drawing lines like that. And I'm going to use another line here. But I can also use my 40, my 60 uh, or 30 degree set square, which is this one here. Um, I can use that one flat there, flat like that, this side here if I want to. Okay, you can practice that a little bit. And now once I have my block there, if I want to darken, I can actually move my T-square like that onto the line we have drawn. And I use my pencil here to draw a dark line, putting more pressure on my pencil to create a perfectly dark line. Now I use my set square and my T square. Please make sure that both of them firm against the side and this is perfectly uh, flush on my, my T square. I'm going to draw a line like that there and I'm going to move it and look how I use. I press down on my T square and I use one finger to control and press down on my set square. And there I draw a line with my pencil. So you've got that. You know, so if you are going to draw a circle, you can use this. Um, you anchor that anywhere you want the circle to, to have a midpoint. Um, like I say, you can first measure the circle by opening up the lever. Now you can move it. I want it to be a 40 radius. There's 40. I close it, I anchor that, now I've closed it, and wherever I want my circle center point to be, I'm going to mark a little center point there, and I'm going to put the sharp point, and I anchor, a little press, and then I just control by drawing a circle like that. I can go right around, I can go over it, doesn't matter. Sometimes you do maybe slip up where you move this, but you just got to practice. If I want a smaller circle on the inside, I can put my T-square there, put my, my circle template, and I'm going to use my clutch pencil this time, where I'm going to try and move this perfectly over my center, like that, and draw a, another circle of a specific diameter there, right? That's the purpose of that one. And so we can continue by drawing other different types of angles. Uh, if you perhaps want to draw an angle of 45, that's how you draw it. If you want to draw it to the other side um, and you want to draw it down, that's going to be your angle like that. If you want to draw 60 to 50 degree angles, you're going to use um, perhaps from that point there. That's a 30 degrees or from the same point, a 60 degree angle like that there. So those are are uh, the drawing equipment which you are all going to be using and I'm just showing you some practice techniques of how to use it but it comes down to the fact that it must be always running on a T-square which must be firmly sliding alongside the side of your drawing board. Alright, I hope that uh, gives you some sort of understanding as to what the drawing equipment in your bag is all about and of course the bag is there just to toss everything in and to keep everything nice and secure inside should you come to any particular venue to come and write an exam or do a test then you just bring along the bag with all the drawing equipment inside easy to carry all right i hope you're going to enjoy that video regarding the introduction of the drawing equipment